day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our grand parade of steam engines here at Strumshaw. And leading the parade today is a real regular. But conversely, one of the uh, newest full-size engines here, because it was only built in 2007. This is the Foster, owned by Mr. Gilbert from Kent, named John Boy. So this is a steam tractor. A steam tractor would be a haulage engine rather than an agricultural machine used for transporting goods, furniture, timber, or anything like that. Okay, the next one here is number 11. This is a Clayton and Shuttleworth General Purpose Engine Cockpit Engine called Valiant. Uh, it's a seven, uh, seven horsepower, normal horsepower, built 1919. It was new to Thomas Ashby of Tring, Buckinghamshire in 1919. Sold to James Craven of Ely in 1930. And then on to Stephen Whitton, Isle of Ely in 1931. After becoming derelict, it was purchased and restored by Albert Deans, Bulldog in 1957. It's been running at many events since 74, when bought for all these brothers of Bonewell, Norfolk. The Valiant was then sold in 1986 to Ronson, but Thornton and then Desmond Fry in 89. Most of the of history here. After major work, then sold to Michael Asher from Devon in 1987. Uh, bought by Edwin Harrod at Western Superman in 98. And then sold to present owners Paul and Anne Blanche of Norwich in 2002. And it's owned and driven here today with Paul and Anne Blanche. Thank you. OK, that's followed by number 20, the Ransom Sims and Jeffries traction engine, Major. Ransom's a particularly well-regarded manufacturer of lawn mowers and groundkeeping equipment. This was a Fenland engine, hence it's got wider wheels than standard. Thoroughly restored by the previous owner, uh, Mr. James Cowd from Forney. It's now owned by Mr. Mark Groom and family. And that's another agricultural engine which would have been used on farms or contracting from farm to farm, threshing, baling or wood sawing. We've got another agricultural engine coming now. This is an Alshin traction engine, Eveden Lad. Uh, seven horsepower, built 1910. It's a new, new to a threshing contractor, Arthur Wellborn of Waltham, of the Wolds, Leicestershire. And in 1926, was to uh, Mr. Burford, then to Mr. F. Newton the same year. 1944, Mr. Thurlby from Eveton bought the working engine until 1960s. Passed into preservation uh, with Mr. Taylor in the 1970s. Uh, it's purchased by his president here in 1993 and is owned by Mr. Poole and driven by Mr. Pete Wing. Okay, so auction engines were uh, made in Northampton. Uh, an interesting point on this engine, as on a few of them, You'll see the pipe coiled up on the back there over the winch rollers. That was to allow you to fill up your water tank. When you were out on the roads, you could pull up and draw the water out of the roadside ditch. But of course, never out of the horse trough, because that is strictly not allowed. This is followed by the first of our burrow engines here this afternoon at Strumshaw. This is Achilles. Achilles is a single crank compound engine that spent its working life in Sussex and is owned by Mr. Clive Fence. This one features a uh, half-length cab or awning to keep the weather off. Uh, the majority of traction engines, agricultural engines, are single cylinder. The Burrell uniquely made a single crank compound engine which uses the steam twice to give greater efficiency but uh, still has a single crank. Okay, the next one here is our first of our road rollers here today. It's the Aving and Porter BS type steam roller. This one's called George. It's 10 tons, built 1917. It was um, changed its name because of its council driver for years was George Bird. And uh, they then changed the name to George. Uh, 1922 X Essex County Council living van. The engine was worked by the council until 1961. Sold for scrap to Arthur Clark, who probably sold it on to Ben Taylor of Saffron Walden for £115. Engine worked on a contract for Essex County Council for another two years before entering preservation in 64. Spending time in Bedfordshire, Essex and Norfolk, the engine has recently undergone a thorough restoration including major drawing of work, new tender and a repaint. It's owned and driven by Dan Daniel Chitty. Yes, and on that roller, if you look on the rear wheel, you'll see there's an apparatus, a piece of machinery there, that's known as a scarifier. And in the days before tarmac roads, you could wind that down into the road surface and tear it up, 
and then you could rake it level and uh, roll it flat with your roller. So the uh, important part of a steam roller's job. This is followed by the Garrett traction engine of Helsted Bell. An interesting little connection here. The previous roller was formerly owned by Arthur Clark and Felsted Bell was rescued for preservation by Arthur Clark, the uh, well-regarded scrap man from Felsted. He had the engine in for scrap and his dad said that engine's too good to cut up. So uh, she started her rallying career way back then in 1955, owned for many years by the late David Norse and exhibited here at uh, Strumpshaw in the 70s now owned by Mr. Stephen Barraclough and Jenny Arnold who is a direct descendant of the Garrett family so there's a nice little tie up there. Okay next one number 17 is the Marshall Traction Engine Monty this one uh, 10 tons of 7 nominal horsepower built 1928 supplied new to the Reynolds Brothers Hall Farm Ringstead Norfolk spent all his working life in the county threshing and wood sawing changed owners four times as acquired for preservation in May 1957 by the late Wesley Key, founder of Stumpshire Steam Museum. Was repainted and rallied until 77, then stood on a static display in the museum. In 2014, a restoration program was green for the last owner, Akiki Angara, Wesley's daughter, after significant boiler repairs was first steamed back in 2017 after 40 years of silence and has now been acquired by the present owner and is owned and driven by Scott Bunting. So there we are, a, a previous uh, museum resident here. Nice to see it back in steam this weekend. This is followed by the Wallace Advance Steamroller Rodney, owned by the Austin family. So we've seen the Aveling roller that's coming round back towards us now. That's your standard uh, roller as envisaged at the turn of the last century. With the uh, development of tarmac roads, uh, rollers such as George were too heavy and they also have a problem where they went from forward to reverse they'd have to stop for a second and then you'd get some little divots in your tarmac road so as tom is demonstrating there a wallace advance could go from forwards to backwards in an instant that's because the engine has no flywheel so uh, there we are that's the wallace advance okay next one is a marshall traction engine this one's called bessie 10 tons, a 7 nominal horsepower again, 1922, was built on uh, 22nd of June 1922 and exhibited new at the Royal Show in Cambridge in July uh, 22 by George Thurlow. Following the show in the same month, the engine was sold to Williams Brothers of Mendlesham, along with a set of threshing equipment, including a Clayton and Shuttleworth drum, elevator and a chaff car. This is the only time she was in commercial ownership until she was sold into preservation in 1956 to a friend Dan and his family of North Tottenham. The engine stayed in their ownership for approximately 60 years until sold in September 2016 to the Garrett family, where she has had various restoration jobs undertaken. This year, the engine is celebrating her 100th birthday, owned and driven by Sean and Sharon Garrett. I don't drop back. So there, another nice Marshall agricultural engine. They were very popular with uh, threshing contractors. And this is another engine that was sold through George Furlow and Son of Stowmarket. George Furlow was actually the first president of the East Anglian Traction Engine Club and at the time when the Preservation of the World started they were a company you could go to for traction engine spares, uh, lifter hoses or uh, boiler joints or anything like that really. Anyway, that's followed by number nine. This is the second of our Burrell single crown compound traction engines joining us in the arena this uh, sunny afternoon and this is the Duchess. The Duchess spent her entire working life in Norfolk before being purchased by Mrs. Haylock at Castle Camps a few years ago. Looked after by Mr. Phil Starling, who's taking it easy having a ride in the coal today. Driven the day by radar and steered by Mr. Andy Rodar. So you see this engine's fitted with a nice set of lamps. So if you're travelling at night, the requirements of the day would require that you'd have your oil lamps trimmed and ready and you'll see the uh, pair of headlights and the one red rear lamp on the back. Okay, number 38, I'll carry on. <laughs> number 38 is the uh, Marshall traction engine owned by Pete and Jenny Copeman from Kings Lynn. This uh, engine worked in Devon and is known as the Hermit. Always presented in immaculate condition. He's been busy with the Brasso and the uh, paintwork polish. And uh, another nicely presented little engine, rubber tracks on the 
rubber tyres on the wheels, bit of comfort on the road, and a full set of firing irons hanging on the back of the cab. <laughs> right, this is uh, Bar Sheba's five tonne, built 1923. Uh, it's applied new to the War Department of the RASC Royal Army Service Corps and used for hauling construction materials when building army camps such as the Ripon Camp. In the late 1920s, he was returned to uh, Ruby's in Lincoln and sold to Charles Weft as showman's caterer from Whitwell in Derbyshire. He then had a full conversion to the showman's specification in 1934. And after the death of Charles West, his widow sold it to the Bell Showman, who lately sold it to Wheatley Showman in Romford, Essex. In 1940, it was sold again and, and uh, used for timber haulers until his back axle broke in 1944. It was sold to scrap at Coldwell in Norfolk, and then back in 1959, it was rescued for preservation once more. And it turned out to be important. What the present owner in 2007 has since undergone new paintwork and mechanical work, and it's owned and by Alan Pond. Okay, that's followed by number five, the Burrell Single Crank Compound Traction Engine. So Gordon, the third of our SCC Burrells. This is another one that's fed its working life in Surrey and Sussex with Walter Bookham and later with um, the Lug family. It was purchased by John Bush, who was going uh, underway, restoring the engine when he unfortunately passed away. Purchased by Derek Easton and family in 2018, driven today by my father, Robert Humphrey, and steered by Ben Easton. And earlier on we heard about the horse that's been called General Giants. Look at this one, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the size of this thing. Number 14, it's a Fowler plowing engine. This is 20 tonnes of engine here. It's built 1919 and is uh, owned by Stephen and Anne and Robert Curtin. followed by number 13, the other one of the pair. Now in case you haven't worked it out, I'll spell it out for you, the members of the public who might not know. Plowing engines worked in pairs. You see the big winch under the boiler barrel there. They would pull the plow or cultivate or another implement backwards and forwards on the wire rope between the pair of engines. Because an engine of this weight you can't drive on the, on the soil, not if you want to cultivate anything in it. These engines for many years were in the uh, museum here at Strumshaw and I have got a picture of one of them driving across the park right where we're standing today um, and it's nice they've come all the way back from uh, Barnard Castle to uh, join us this weekend and an immaculate job they've done restoring them. Okay, the next one's number six. This is a, a Burrell SCC traction engine called Spitfire. It's a uh, six normal horsepower, built 1903. Uh, engine was new to Isaac Ball of Wells, Lancashire, and a, convert a convertible and spent its mid years his ownership as a roller. His career was back to the fashion engine in 1940, and then was derelict from 1945. Bought and restored by the late John Armour in 1970, and then in 1980 he joined the Richard Parrott collection of Fengate in Wheating, and he's used for thrashing and stone crushing, and is owned by Richard Parrott, and driven here by Kate Clark and Jack Douglas. An interesting little feature of these Lancashire engines is the full length cab on top and the uh, tool cabinet in the back of the cab which is very useful to put your bits and pieces in but it's less useful when you're on the end of a push pole because you can't see what's going on. This is followed by our steam car here this weekend with uh, Stuart and Kim Hart and this is a Stanley steamer and uh, they're a fascinating vehicle which I don't claim to know very much about. Um, whenever I see a steam car, it's usually surrounded by concerned looking people and flames and or steam. But this one's running perfectly today. He says, I hope not to jinx it. Okay, number 23. Now, this is uh, Wallace and Stevens expansion agricultural engine called Faith. This is a uh, 7 horsepower, built 1916. Uh, when new, pulled artillery to the front line in France in World War One, and then worked in Suffolk. Uh, stood for 16 years derelict before being brought by a present owner in 1965 and uh, rallied extensively since then. And I've also just been told today that this engine uh, was at the very, very start of Strumpton Steam Rally, which was then a held at Woodson at the time, 
and his engine and his owner has been present at every steam engine rally ever since. And that's over 40 years worth. So well done, sir, and thank you very much for bringing it in. There we are. Can't have a Norfolk rally without NATO. So uh, there we are. And if you have a look under the boiler of NATO's engine as he goes by, you'll see those angled pieces of metal hanging on that bar. They're spuds or clips or cleats, depending where you come from. We always called them spuds. And you put them on the back wheels. You'll see the holes in the back wheels. You pin them on there. And if you're in a wet stack yard or a muddy field, you can get a bit of grip to move about. Anyway, that's followed by number 40. Number 40 is another one of our steamrollers. The Aveling and Porter, owned by Mr. John Mack. This is an eight-ton roller. Traction engines tend to be designated by horsepower, but steamrollers they go by weight and it can be a very arbitrary figure in fact this one worked in Essex and uh, Aveling and Porter interestingly made more steamrollers than every other manufacturer combined so imagine that and all with horses on the front uh, another one of our showman's engines now this is a Fowler showman's tractor called the Rosemary it's a uh, five normal horsepower built 1924 and is a Fowler showman style tractor it's owned and driven by the Bush family Look at the detail of the workmanship into that. So there we are, Mr. Bush's Fowler, and as I said, Fowler leads the Burrell Follows. So that's followed by number 26, which is the Burrell Road Locomotive Dorothy. Now, a road logo has several refinements over the top of your ordinary agricultural engine because it was designed for hauling heavy loads over long distances. You see the rubber tyres, they're uh, sprung, three speeds, so you've got an extra high top gear, not to be used all the time, as seems to be the opinion among various people these days, but uh, never mind, we won't get into that today, it's only the first day of the rally. Also fitted with a front tank or a belly tank to increase your range of water, and uh, you might be able to do 25 or 30 miles on the water you carry with one of those against eight or nine on an ordinary agricultural engine. Okay, we're going to roll the camera. So it's an Aveling Porter type GT steamroller from Sydney. It's eight tons this one. Uh, built 1928. Built for the Australian export market and export to uh, Sydney. It was then explored as a tractor to avoid roller import duties. Less import duty on steam tractors at that time. It's uh, returned to the UK in 2004. Much work has been done by the present owner and it's owned and driven by Neil Ayres. Oh, an interesting roller, that one. One that was uh, designed and exported when, when she was built. Spent her working life abroad. So there's a few differences you'll spot on this engine compared to the uh, normal, uh, shall we say, UK market rollers. This is followed by another barrel roller. Uh, this is Jeanette, owned by Mr. Roger Adams of Brandon. And you'll see some similarities between this engine and Spitfire. They both work for Isaac Ball of Wales in Lancashire. And she's fitted with the uh, full length cab and the big tool cabinet in the uh, back. Real heavy roll of this one, single crank compound. And uh, lovely to see it here at Strumshaw. This is called Monarch. This is 14 tons of Avengers 1, 8 nominal horsepower, built 1913. Um, it was as part of a batch of five engines for export. For an unknown reason, this one was never sent. It's believed to have been kept by foodlands for general duties, including being hired out for work. It was route registered in 1921 by foodlands themselves to comply with the new Road Traffic Act. The engine was purchased in 1934 by a well-known uh, Barlow of High Lee, Cheshire. And worked for them mainly on threshing duties until 1948. 1955, the engine was sold for preservation to Commander Hilton of Cambridge, and then passed on to Stan Burgess in the late 1980. Sorry, purchased from Stan by the present owners in 97. Much mechanical rest work, restoration work has been carried out by the present owners. A new flanged and rivet firebox was built in 2007, and this one is owned by the Wheel family.
So that's the uh, Vic Foden from the Wild family, locally, just the other side of Norwich. And this is their other engine, the Ruston Proctor from Lincoln. All good things come from Lincoln, particularly Ruston products. This engine spent its working life in Norfolk before winding up in Evans and Tring scrapyard, where it was rescued by Roger Wilde in the 1960s and has been uh, used and rallied by the Wilde family ever since. A few years ago it had a uh, fully new boiler and uh, I know what that feels like because that's exactly what ours is having done at the moment. 1908 this engine was built and uh, although I'm slightly biased I say that the Ruston traction engine is the Rolls Royce of engines and you do very, very hard to go a long way to find one better. And that is under the charge of the Peggs family as it has been for several years here at Strubshaw with Mr Potter in the background making sure they don't get in a muddle. Okay, number 28 is a Burrell Shellman's engine. This is a St. Brannock, 5 normal horsepower, built 1921. Was supplied new to J.B. Dugdale of Warwickshire, landowner, uniquely painted black. So, to Isaacs of Brampton, North Devon, working on haulage before being sold into preservation to T.W. Gascoigne, Bodicart, Banbury, who converted it into the Shellman's form we see here today. The engine has been totally overhauled by the present owners and is owned by Richard and Linda Milvan. So a word or two on uh, showman's engine as this one comes by as the name would suggest they were built for the travelling showman to use on the fairground and you'll find a, a couple more up there generating running lights, powering organs and one thing or another. So uh, the dynamo on the front of the engine there is for generating 110 volt DC to light and power the rides. Anyway, this is followed by Mr Maynard's number 25. I've got my programme in my pocket, I ain't going to read that. That's Queen Mary. Queen Mary is Mr Rudd's old engine from uh, Middleton near Kings Lynn. And uh, for many years uh, she was there until purchased by Terry, so the full restoration, the full works there, and that's a lovely example of a three-speed burrow, and that's come to join us all the way from Kent. 